Well, good morning. It is always uh, such a privilege to uh, spend time studying and learning while I prepare for these Sundays. Uh, it's usually a rough week, um, but I think I'm in good company, right? Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Brenda, and uh, I do a little bit of teaching here and there. And I know that some of you in this space this morning are, are new. And I just wanna take a quick minute to remind you all, or to tell you for the first time, that we have an RDNA brunch next Sunday, right after service. And RDNA is simply restores DNA. So we talk about all things restore. You can ask questions, uh, get to know some of the leaders and the board. And uh, we try to make it concise, feed you lunch, and send you on your way. But this morning, uh, this morning we are continuing in this series in the book of Ruth. And last week, Jean brought us um, a fabulous message, and I just want to share with you some takeaways. For those of you that were here, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And for those of you that weren't, make sure you take a listen online. But my takeaways, um, I love how Jean pointed out that Boaz was a businessman. And he did ministry as he went. He read the account of how when Boaz showed up at the fields, he blessed his people and they blessed him back. And I just thought that's, it was just such an amazing culture that Boaz created in his workspace. And it was actually really inspiring to me. Gene also implored us to not wait for a position. Like, don't wait to do ministry until you have a position. I know there's, there's this tendency to think, well, someday, right, once X, Y, and Z happen, then maybe I'll step into ministry. But as, as Boaz is an example for us, we can do ministry. And, and Gene and I strongly believe that we should all do ministry right where we are. For some of you, that's in a cubicle at work. For some of you, that's in a classroom. For some of you, it's the sidelines, right? I'm guessing a lot of you find yourself in the sidelines right now, watching your kids do sports, do band, do dance, whatever it is. Maybe you're coaching. Maybe it's in parenting or friendships. But don't wait for a position. Do it now, right where God has you. And the third one, I think you all remember, he implored us ladies to wait for a Boaz. Don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for cheap as, lazy as, or broke as. Remember that? So don't settle. But all of those takeaways and what we're gonna talk about today, they are about way more than marriage. I think the things that um, we'll talk about can apply to a business relationship, to any kind of friendships, just relationships in general. We'll get into some real life applications um, from this passage from long, long ago. We'll see how you don't just attract what you want, you tend to attract what you are. In other words, um, example for you, you may be a yeller. You might yell at your kids. You might yell at your spouse. I don't know, you might yell at your employees or your boss. But if one of them were to yell at you, you'd be like, what? How dare you yell at me? I experienced that with my kids a long time ago. Or maybe another example is, you don't understand and you're hurt by friends, coworker, spouse, boss, when they're disrespectful to you. And yet, you are passive aggressive, mean, controlling, manipulative. So I'm just gonna suggest that if you don't like the responses you're getting, maybe look at yourself. Like, look in the mirror. That horrible word called introspection it is arguably some of the hardest work. It's messy, it is uncomfortable, and it is so hard 
but it also some of the best work you will ever do. To look in the mirror, to look at self and see what needs to be adjusted. I think that when we do that, that is when we can become the best version of ourselves. And I think ultimately this work that we do of introspection is gonna result in honoring God more than we have before. And I think that is what points people to him. Isn't that why we do this whole narrow way, the hard way? It's to reflect Jesus to a people and a world that is broken and lost. So if you want a Ruth, be a Boaz. If you want a Boaz, be like Ruth. If you want great employees, create that culture of honor and respect. If you want good friendships, be a good friend. If you want to be respected and honored and valued and seen, be those things. See, relationships, we talk a lot about relationships around here and how important they are. But relationships take a lot of time to develop. It takes a lot of time to discern. So this morning, we wanna look at what it means to take the time. And we have four C's. Some of you like, you know, that sort of stuff. And I think, you know, any good preacher throws those in sometimes. But this morning we wanna talk about taking the time to seek character, explore connection, to show consideration, and receive confirmation. So what I mean by that, uh, seeking character, for example, is, okay, so you're maybe considering a dating relationship, maybe a marriage, uh, maybe a new business partnership, or just a friendship. What is it that others say about this person? Others that know this person, what do they say about their character? And as you spend time around them, what is it that you see about their character? And then explore connection. Get to know them, right? Take the time to get to know them. And then how does that information that you've gathered in your observation of this person, and how does the information that your friends or family, the people that know them, what they say about their character, how does that line up with what you want, or maybe in your business setting, what you need, and then see their consideration. Do they guard your dignity? Do they bless you? Do they go that extra mile and exceed your expectations? Do they value, bless, honor? And then receive confirmation. Do, the, do those people nearest you like who you like? Do they think it's a good fit or a partnership or a friendship? And please, especially as it, as it relates to marriage and dating, don't give in to that seeing their potential. Because I, I just don't want you to think for one minute that you're going to win them over once you are married, once you are in that covenant. It's a good thing to see the best in others but there are some times when it has to wait and you have to know. Listen to those you trust. That is being wise and discerning. So let's see how this played out with Ruth and Boaz. And I'm going to read to you part of chapter three today, but I'm gonna read it in a more modern version, the message version, and it's not gonna be on the screen. I just want you to kind of listen to this bizarre, story. I think it's pretty bizarre. But as you listen, just try to imagine this scene. So we pick up in Ruth 3. One day, her daughter, her mother-in-law, Naomi, said to Ruth, my dear daughter, isn't it about time I arranged a good home for you so you can have a happy life? And isn't Boaz, our close relative, the one working with those young women you've been working? Maybe it's time to make our move. Tonight is the night of Boaz's barley harvest at the threshing floor. Take a bath, put on some perfume, 
get all dressed up and go to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until the party is well underway and he's had plenty of food and drink. When you see him slipping off to sleep, watch where he lies down and then go there. Lie at his feet to let him know that you're available to him for marriage. Then wait and see what he'll do, what he says. He'll tell you what to do. Ruth said, if you say so, I'll do it, just as you've told me. She went down to the threshing floor and put her mother-in-law's plan into action. Boaz had a good time. Eating and drinking his fill, he felt great. Then he went off to get some sleep, lying down at the end of a stack of barley. Ruth quietly followed. She lay down to signal her availability for marriage. In the middle of the night, the man was suddenly startled and sat up. Surprise, this woman is asleep at his feet. He said, and who are you? She said, I am Ruth, your maiden. Take me under your protecting wing. You're my close relative, you know, in the circle of covenant redeemers, you have a right to marry me. He said, God bless you, my dear daughter. What a splendid expression of love. And when you could have had your pick of any of the young men around. And now, my dear daughter, don't worry about a thing. I'll do all you could ask or want. Everybody in town knows what a courageous woman you are, a real prize. You're right, I am a close relative to you, but there is one even closer than I am. So, stay the rest of the night. In the morning, if he wants to exercise his customary rights and responsibilities as the closest covenant redeemer, he'll have his chance. But if he isn't interested, as God lives, I'll do it. Now, go back to sleep until morning. Bizarre? Could this be any more opposite than today's dating scene? I think not. And some of it is, I just, I don't know, some of it is just really weird and conversation I would never have with my mother-in-law. Anybody else relate to me on that one? I was recently standing with my, with Jean's brother's wife, so my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law. It was just this week and I'm like, okay, this is, this is uncanny that we're standing like this because I've been studying Ruth and Naomi. And I looked at her, I looked at them and I said, you know, I've been reading about Ruth this week and you know how she said she would just, you know, where you go, I'll go. Your God will be my God, my people, my, your people. And I said to Jean's mom, I said, I just don't know that I could do that. And she said, oh, you shouldn't. Oh, you shouldn't. So we're, we're on the same page. But, but really, like when you think about Ruth and Naomi and you think about what Ruth did, if I put myself, if in that picture I am Ruth, and my sister-in-law, Krista, is Orpa. Ooh, um, I would be saying, you know what? This day, I'm gonna choose to now be Amish. And I'm gonna let go of all the things that I've been doing, and I'm gonna enter into a completely different life and go where you go. But I have to believe there was something about Naomi's life and Naomi's God that was so attractive to Ruth. And yes, Naomi was bitter, but she didn't let that stop her journey with God. And it, and it shows up. So life was not as she intended to lose her husband and 10 years later lose both sons. But as we look at this story, I just wonder, like, could we, could we go back to this? Like, not the marrying family part, that's gross and weird, but, but the effort that it takes to know someone. See, I don't think that Ruth and, and could have done what she did in this story that I just read to you without the events that were in chapter two. So I wanna just jump back 
to chapter two, and Jean read a lot of these scriptures last week, but I just want to go through these, these steps, this taking the time and see how it plays out in this story here with Ruth. Um, as far as seeking character, we see in chapter two, verse one, that Boaz was a man of standing, like he had a good reputation. In verses eight to 10, we read where Boaz asked Ruth, she, he asked her to like stay in my fields. I'll talk to the guys so they don't touch you. I'll take care of you. I'll make sure you're protected. He cared for her. And verse 11, it talks about Boaz where he says, where he's exploring, like he knows Ruth's character. He knows what others have said and about her loyalty to Naomi and to God. She didn't have a victim mentality. She wasn't looking for a handout. She was working hard. And she didn't compromise her, herself by selling her body. So this all speaks to Ruth's character as well, Boaz and Ruth. And I wonder this morning, are you a person of standing, of a good character, a reflection of Jesus every day, not just Sunday, and do your actions line up with your words? Character. Then we explore connection, and we see in verse 14 how Boaz invites her to lunch, and oh, I would love to know what they talked about. I would have loved to have been a mouse. Um, and, and I will say that I, I don't see, uh, there was no sex, it was just lunch. And beyond that, I don't see so far in scripture that we've read that Boaz ever comments about Ruth's physical appearance. It's always about her character. So they explored connection. And this part takes time as well, right? But I wonder, are you able to connect with people to be that real and authentic person um, that you take the time to ask really good questions to get to know the other person, like, you know, get be no, below the surface and all the small talk. And then showing consideration in verse, verses 15 and 16, we see how Boaz protects Ruth's dignity and he lets her work. But he does make it a little bit easy for her and he gives her extra, right? He says, let more fall so she can gather it. He, kind of, he goes out of his way to bless her. The amount of um, barley that she harvested that day in one day was actually the equivalent of two weeks work. So pursue, cherish, respect, validate, be curious, protect. Pray. Those are all ways that we can show consideration for those that we're in relationship with. So how do you do in this area? Or how about the person that you're considering for a marriage or a dating relationship, for a new friendship, or for a business partnership? Consideration for others. And then receiving confirmation, the last C, we see in verses 19 to 20 that Naomi confirms the character of Boaz. You know, she had been praying for someone, for Ruth, for a godly man, and she's thinking that Boaz, Boaz may be it. That confirmation piece, when those you love the most support your relationships is priceless. So in summary, Ruth shows up sweaty, at least I have to believe after a day in the field, she was sweaty. But Boaz sees her, he sees her character. Then he seeks connection. He shows her consideration and Naomi gives the confirmation. And then we see, we get through all of that in chapter two and now chapter three, Ruth or Naomi says, this is him, Ruth. Let's make a move, let's go for it. But this process takes time. And it's something that I know I can say for myself, I don't always embrace. Because I like to get there as quickly as I can, from A to Z as quickly as I can. 
And I also just want to make one quick note before I move on here that just as Boaz is the guardian redeemer in this story, he's the one who protects, the one who provides, and he gives Ruth everything. Even though he does not owe her anything, he is not next in line or first in line, but he still goes that extra to bless and care for and provide and protect her. So just as Boaz is the guardian redeemer, Jesus is our redeemer who protects and provides and makes all things new. No matter what we've done, where we've been, if we're currently in a marriage that's struggling or we're working through divorce or a breakup, we've had a friendship loss or a bad business connection, God is a redeeming God. Jesus is our guardian redeemer. And this story I love so much, there's just so much sweet redemption in it. And I wonder this morning if your story would read like this. Are you and the people that you're, are in your life of noble character? Do you take the time to get to know someone? And what about showing consideration and receiving confirmation? In other words, waiting on God? I don't think that we should make a move in a relationship before we take the time. And I know maybe you're sitting here this morning and you've short-circuited the path and now you're in a challenging relationship. It happens. We're impatient. But God can still redeem it. Actually, God loves to redeem it. And I believe that in all of those scenarios, we can learn. We can learn and move on and do better next time. As you stand uh, with me, I wanna just encourage you, as always, in some potential next steps. I wonder if this morning if there's anything that you need to change in any of your relationships so that those relationships can be better honoring God. Like maybe you need to slow down. We need to slow down and engage those four C's. Again, take the time in chapter two so that chapter three can be a success. What qualities would your coworkers, your family members, your friends say you have? I tell you, that could be a scary question to ask, right? But that's part of that process of introspection is learning about ourselves. What would others say about our character? See, we do play a part. We do play a role in our redemption stories. And your story can always include redemption, always. So what is one step you can take this week to invest in a friendship? Maybe to show more consideration, to value, respect, be a better reflection of Jesus in those relationships. Maybe you need to hold up the mirror and see if you are who you want to be. Reflect and adjust, and we submit and we recalibrate. And again, all of this is so that we can minister as we go, reflecting Jesus in all of our relationships in everything we do. Naomi didn't have a platform. She didn't have a title other than mother-in-law and widow. And while it does say she was bitter, she didn't play the victim card. And ultimately her actions pointed Ruth to Heavenly Father. And that, friends, is ministry. It doesn't need to be complicated. 
is letting our lives reflect Jesus so that other people will say, I want that. I want to follow your God. Mm -hmm. Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz, I believe, were all of great character. They took the time to explore connection. Ruth and Boaz both showed consideration of each other, and Naomi confirmed it all. I think it's a pretty good format that we can all use in our relationships to take the time to make wise connections and to be our best selves in all the relationships that we're in. So again, I encourage you this morning to, to think about what could be that just one step. We don't have to, to think that we're going to change everything overnight, but what is one step that you can take this week? And take it. Start that journey maybe of introspection, investing in a friendship differently. God, we come to you and we're grateful this morning that we have these great examples of how to do relationship, how to honor you in our relationships, how to point people to you just in our everyday life. And God, I pray for my friends in this space and those online this morning that are contemplating maybe the situations that they find themselves in, maybe that aren't healthy, that need some adjustment, or maybe things are pretty good, but you know, I could do better. God, I ask that you would just show us what it is, like where it is that you want to take us next as we continue on this narrow road, that hard road, show us just what the very next step is. And God, I'm grateful for your presence with us on that path and the Holy Spirit in us that prompts us to adjust and step in or step back so grateful for your presence. God, I thank you for this time, for this word, for this great example. And for this time that we could spend together now as we go into worship in song. God, I just pray that you would move in our hearts. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.